What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today, we're talking about the Faction Wars. We got the Knights Revenant Crypt. I wanted to make this video for a while now, while it's fresh in my head. We got Stage 20, Stage 21. We're going to talk about how we get these low scores. We're going to talk about how we beat this and get the three stars, period. So, uh, the real question is, usually on Stage 21, can you beat it without a Resurrector? And if not, you need one. What kind of team composition do you need around the Resurrector to keep your team alive and get the, the final win with the three stars by having everybody alive when the boss dies? So for this faction specifically, we go over to stage 20. I have a Rector Drath. Rector Drath is going to be your primary source of resurrections for this faction. We do have some other uh, people like Mother Cybul, for example, can uh, give you a revive on death buff. Uh, stuff like that, but I mean, for the most part, it's Rector Drath or Bust. Um, you also have the option of a uh, DPS. So I would say that uh, I'm going to link the Faction Wars, Faction Crypt video I created initially in here, just for anybody who needs to look at team compositions and how I typically go about, you know, beating the, the rooms. Um, for this one, we have a pretty balanced team. We have a healer, healer. We have a, I, I guess you can consider him a support slash debuffer slash dps uh because he does have the stuns he has the shields and he does a little bit of damage then you have typically two dps slots for the most part uh if not more like i said you can consider all three of these dps uh, but for the most part she's primary dps full crown is so for this team composition we could go with healer healer port support dps with uh support dps is these two right here Technically, Tomb Lord is considered a support, and uh, if he doesn't, kind of weird how his kit works, right? Because like he's going to drop the debuffs first, decrease defense, decrease attack, and if the wave is over after that, he's not going to provide much damage. Um, same thing for the poisons. When he puts the poisons on the other people, if they don't get a chance to tick off, he's not going to get a lot of damage. So he is a damage dealer in many ways, uh, but if his damage doesn't start applying, he's really not going to rack up the DPS. Uh, so he is considered a support hero. Um, for me, I have many different heroes here. Like most people are not going to have a, a Calvalax, a Tomb Lord, and a Hed Hegemon, or nonetheless two Hegemons. Um, so I do have different options. Uh, I would say that um, is it required to beat stage 21, have a Resurrector? And the answer is no for this faction. I can beat this with five DPS characters. If I take these guys out, and I run it like something like Calvalex in the lead because he has a speed aura. Um, we bring in the two Hegemons. We have Tomb Lord, which kind of a support, but let's classify him as a DPS. And then Skull Crown, that's how we get the fast time here on this boss. Uh, we bring in pure DPS. Now, other DPS options available in this faction, Faceless, uh, you got um, Sinesha, I would say, is a damage dealer. It goes really nice with um, Skull Crown but also a healer as well. So she can be a healing option for you that also brings some DPS. Um, I don't believe we have a ton more hiding around in the vault. Uh, Thylesia is one that's known to hit pretty hard. So you have a, a couple options, but I mean, if, unless you got really lucky with uh, these types of champions, these Void Legendaries or even Void Skull Crown, who was hard for me to get, to be honest. Uh, I kind of got her like one of my last Void uh, epics out of all of them. So she wasn't like something I got very first. Uh, she was kind of last. You're going to need to get lucky in some way, in my opinion. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to beat Faction Stage 21 uh, unless you have mega gear. Uh, the other way that I've been able to beat stages like Stage 21, if I don't have a Resurrector, uh, we got the 5 DPS like I just showed you with this team. But the other way would be to have a lot of tanks. And uh, the tanks just kind of keep themselves alive, ally protection, stuff like that. I don't have anybody in this faction really built up that's tanky tanky uh, that could actually, you know, demonstrate that for you. So I don't know if it's possible for this faction. I can't speak on that uh, from firsthand experience. But I would want to say that, you know, anything's possible when you got like enough gear, your gear is leveled up, um, got enough high level champions. So I'm, I'm sure it's possible. I just haven't done it. Uh, champions like um, this created monster Frankenstein here, uh, Farsalus Grave Dirt, um, Sepulcher Sentinel, 
those types, maybe Deathless, I'm not sure 100% what her kit exactly is. But these types of champions, these tankier type champions, Burgoth could be a healer, for example. Uh, even uh, Mother Cybul here, she's HP based. Um, it's probably possible to do it. I'm sure it is. But, you know, I, I just haven't been able to level that many characters. My characters specifically, we're going to run this with a um, 5 DPS set to beat it and also with the Resurrectors. And uh, I would say Doom Priest, very clutch. Rector Drath, if you don't have her, she's going to be almost required. Almost required. Uh, Miscreated Monster is another one. The Doom Priest, Miscreated Monster, like if you don't have these two, like they're going to help you immensely when you're not running the full DPS 5 slot like I was. And if you don't have a Resurrector, they're going to be, you know, you're going to need some heals. You're going to need some, um, some support. We got Calvalax in the lead for the speed. We got Miscreated Monster, Doom Priest. Tomb Lord and Skull Crown. Now let me remind everybody that usually speed kills in this game. Speed is king. The faster you go, the better off you're going to be. Now my skills and my artifacts and everything here on these characters specifically is probably not the highest it could be. It could definitely be better. But I want to demonstrate that we don't need Rector Drath and a Resurrector to get to stage 20 with three stars. And we don't need Hegemons. So let's go ahead and get started here. Here we go. All right, now the key I feel like is really having your cooldowns available for very specific moments in the fight, and especially for round three. So right now, I do feel okay with going ahead and hitting them with my A3 and letting it cycle back through. We have enough time to do that. Go ahead and hit Warlord with the A1, decrease turn meter, put the slow on. Go ahead and add the buff because it'll cycle back through, hopefully, anyways. We're okay with using the stun here, even though it did not hit anybody. At least it didn't land. All right. Go ahead and hit Warlord one more time. Looking good. We got the weekend. All right. Seer dropped a bomb on us, but we survived. No big deal. Go ahead and hit the Warlord one more time. Is now as long as we kill the war mamas and clear the wave before the bombs go off, we should be good. Go ahead and finish them off. All right, good to go. Okay, now we have the three ally attacks coming from Longbeards, and we have the bashers here. We could take out the bashers first and pretty easily, in fact. Go ahead and hit the bashers with more poison, spread the poisons around. Hopefully, when they get their turns, they'll just tip over and die. Go ahead and do the attack buff up. I think it's okay right now to drop the stun, get a little more AoE damage here. Go ahead and hit him with the A1. Okay, one person down, looking pretty good here, good to go. Let's go ahead and take out this basher. Ooh, I should have took out that long beard right there. Just a second sooner. All right, here we go. We're going to decrease the turn meter, hopefully. Did not work. And we still did, left this basher alive. Oh, man. All right, we shouldn't have done that. Let's go ahead and take out this one right now. Looking good so far, though. Looking good. All right. Hopefully, we got enough skills available here for round three. Make it matter. All right. I'm going to go ahead and let this one cycle back through one time. Let's go ahead and slow down Warlords. Didn't decrease the turn meter. No big deal. Okay. We're going to go ahead and put the decrease attack, decrease defense. Go ahead and get the attack buff on. Get the ally protection up. And let's drop the bomb. All right. Nobody died, though. That's okay, though. We're going to go ahead and use the A3 right now. There we go. And everybody's down. Look at that. All right. So the key there was really stopping the Warlord from increasing my skills to be on cooldown. And also preventing him from healing the rest of the team up. And putting on a bunch of buffs. Also, the man eater is not getting the unkillable buffs up, 
Also, we had to make sure that we killed somebody or made sure that we slowed them down long enough so that they didn't get a full ally attack with everybody at one of my DPS characters like Calvalax because they would have killed him. Now here, we have 465,000 DPS from Calvalax, mostly from the poisons. We have Miscreated Monster bringing in 93,000. Doom Priest at 13,000. Tomb Lord with 95,000. So he really wasn't supplying a lot of DPS, but he was supplying a lot of debuffs, which increased the DPS of everybody else. Skull Crown coming in with the majority of the damage here. Very awesome. Void. Epic. 547,000. Really nice. Really, really nice. So as long as you have some DPS, I mean, I don't know which DPS characters you have. Some people have um, Soulless. Some people have Faceless. Some people have different ones. So there's a lot of different options available. As long as you can get your DPS fast enough, hitting hard enough, and you have at least, probably could have even sufficed putting in a fourth DPS instead of one of these guys, that you can get this one done. Just with DPS alone. I'm going to go over these guys super fast. Go over their kits. Go over their books. Go over their masteries. So some of these guys, actually maybe all of them, have been leveled up since the video. So these Hegemons had lower level stats and the artifacts. Stuff like that. Uh, so we got the stun set in this Hegemon. I'm pretty sure one of the other Hegemons was in a pure perception set. Not provoke. So he has books. Full masteries. And then we have... The second Hegemon, which was in pure perception before, but now has a Provoke set. Same thing, booked up, Masteries. We have Calvalax here. And I would say this is true for almost every single Faction Wars. If I don't have the guys maxed out, I got them pretty close to maxed out. If not every single one of them, the majority of them. You know what I mean? By stage 21. So we got them in Divine Speed and Speed Set. Going very fast. Calvalax is fully booked. I would say most of my legendaries are booked up. He's got his masteries. Moving on to Tomb Lord. We got him in a Savage set. Perception. He's booked up. Masteries. Moving on down to Skull Crown. Savage. Cruel. Fully booked. Masteries. Rector Drath. Most of them have been leveled up, like I said. Her, most definitely. She's like got a huge upgrade. Almost everything 16s here uh, since then. And I think she was pretty much about like 13s, about the time of the video. So one of the ones that was a little bit subpar. Now she's in a Relentless set, Resilience. We got her fully booked up, besides the A1. And then the Masteries. We have Doom Priest, Masteries, Books. And Relentless set with Speed. Then we have the, the man himself, last but not least. He's definitely been leveled up quite a bit since then. He had pretty much 13s as well. And he's rocking the Immortal with the Life. So we got him booked up. And Masteries. So those are the majority of the champs to be used in the video. Now, for the rest of the video, I have two bonus clips. We have the very first run I ever did. Now, I'm going to knock that out with three stars, but it took about 25 minutes. And then we have a speed run after that with five DPS. So stay tuned if you guys want to see some extra footage. I'll kind of keep that fast forward. All right, so that's it for today's video. Besides the bonus footage I'm going to play next and fast forward. So if you guys like these videos, if you guys appreciate them, you guys want to see some more, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys take it easy. Peace. All right, so I'm going to run you through fast forward real quick through my very first run getting three stars. It's about a 25-minute run. It was very slow. I'm not sure exactly why it was so slow, but it took quite a bit of time to get over there. It's like the DPS was kind of light. But uh, by the end of the match, we ended up having Calvalax with the majority of the damage. We just had a lot going on. So go ahead and check this one out. And then after this one, I'll show you guys a wrecking ball of an actual team that has five DPS and just destroys the boss wave in very short time.
All right, so we got the majority of the damage coming from Calvalax, the majority of the heals coming from Rector Drath. We got Calvalax with the majority of the damage, 847,000. We got the Hegemons coming in, kind of nice. We got Tomb Lord over here, debuffer, 390,000. And Skull Crown finishing us off with 634,000. That's quite a bit. That's how we steamroll the content. That's how we get the 2 minute, 44 second score. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. You guys have a great day. You guys take it easy. Peace.